Hey guys, Kim here, and you are tuned into Kim E, the Diabetes MP, a place where nurse practitioners can come to improve their diabetes management and education skills. Today, we're going to take it back to the basics. Now, I'll be honest, for the past couple of months here, I've been talking about things outside of diabetes. I've talked about diabetes, but I've also talked about other things outside of diabetes, and that is because I'm not just a diabetes NP. I am a family nurse practitioner, and I have knowledge on other things. I've been a nurse practitioner since 2012, but I think that it's time to go back to the basics. And so what we're going to talk about today are the three P's of diabetes, polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphagia. If you want to learn a little bit more, perhaps learn something that you didn't know about the three P's, stay tuned. We're going to get into it. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of overview. And to be quite honest with you guys, some of you, this is going to be a review for. Some of you, depending on where you're at in your nursing career, this may be brand new to you. Okay, some of us might have forgot about it and you're like, you know what, I forgot about that. So hopefully it will be able to reach you wherever you are in your nursing journey and in your nursing career. Okay, but something I do want to mention about the three P's of diabetes is that when we're talking about the signs and the symptoms of diabetes, we have to understand that these are things that can be very gradual for our patients. It's something that can be overlooked. And so you do have to take the time to actually ask and get a good history over this stuff because these may be things that people really honestly, they don't know that they have the problem yet. And there's lots of research out there that tells us that people on average can actually have the diagnosis of diabetes seven to 10 years prior to actually getting an official diagnosis. That's a lot of time, okay? That's a lot of pancreas cells that have gone inactive or damaged, okay? So we want to make sure that we're asking about this stuff, guys, because to some it's something that they're not, they can easily overlook it, okay? Now, like I said, we're going to be talking about polyuria. We're going to be talking about polydipsia, polyphagia. These are what are considered the classic symptoms. Remember that there is no one diabetic. And so you may have a patient that doesn't have any of this, okay? You may have a patient that has all of these symptoms presenting, or you may have a patient that may have one, maybe two. OK, and so understand that it has to be tailored to the patient and that it can come and look many different ways. OK, now, another thing that I want to say too, a couple of more things that I want to say is that if by chance you need some help helping your patients understand this a little bit more, you're, you're a little tied um, strapped for time. I did make a video that in my patient corner that goes over the three P's in a way that patients can understand it. So if you're looking for that, if that would be helpful for you, it's in the description box. Just click that down there. Also, I am also putting a free cheat sheet for you as the provider just to keep your mind um, on the classic symptoms. If this will help you, again, that's in the description box as well. And the last thing I would like to say before we get into the individual P's is that the thing about you'll see as I'm talking, the thing that you're going to see is that some of these kind of, they kind of are connected. And one could be even argued that they can cause the next one. OK, some of it you'll kind of see. And, and, you know, even when I was looking over this and when I was learning about this, I was just saying, like, it's kind of like a cause and effect. This happens and that causes something else to happen. And that is why we have you see these three P's in that why they can really coexist together. So anyways, let's get into the individual ones. So let's talk about polyuria. Now, we know that polyuria is increased urination. Now, the typical person, the, the typical normal person without diabetes and not experiencing polyuria, typically puts out about two liters of fluid, two liters of urine a day, okay? Now, what would classify somebody as having polyuria is if they're putting out about three liters or more, okay? And it's really even considered excessive if it's about two and a half liters. But polyuria is not really classified until you hit that three liter mark. 
Now, clearly there are other things that can cause polyuria, um, lots of things, normal things. So you want to make sure that you are getting a good history on people and you're really looking at it as a holistic you know, history, because there's many things that can cause polyuria, okay? Many, many, many things that are not pathological at all. Like I said, pregnancy. We all know that uh, pregnant women, they urinate more, okay? But there's a reason why they're, they're urinating more. So you want to make sure that you're getting a good history. But one of the good things to remember, though, is that the most common cause for polyuria is diabetes. So if somebody is telling you that they're urinating more and they seem to not be able to stay out of the bathroom, it would behoove you to at least dive a little deeper in that. Now, in a nutshell, what happens with polyuria in relation to diabetes is that you have an increased amount of glucose. We know that because that is what diabetes is. You have a high amount of circulating glucose in your bloodstream. That is causes an increased osmolarity, okay? Now, if you need a little review with that, I'm not gonna go over what that is. I'm gonna put um, a video or two down in the description box if you need a little bit more review for that, but it does increase your osmolarity. And for the body to remedy this, because we know that our body is always trying to repair itself. It's always trying to find balance. It's a powerful machine. So, of course, naturally, the body is going to try to get the body back into balance. It is going to try to remedy this by off loading that fluid okay as that osmolarity is going up you got increased fluid and it's trying to get that out okay and so that's why you would have your polyuria and it's also known that pushing out the glucose water will follow so all of these things together would cause your polyuria so polydipsia now we know this to be increased thirst and as a result of the polyuria, you are now offloading volume that you wouldn't typically be offloading. Our body does not put off an extra liter. And so you have this large amount that is coming out of our body quicker, most likely than normal. And so what would that leave you? You would le It would leave your body dry. It would leave your cells dry, which leads to dehydration. Okay. And so that is. In a sense, the natural body's response is increased thirst, feeling like you're thirsty more than usual, okay? Now, here's the thing about the polydipsia. Most people can recognize the polyuria because you're either in the bathroom a lot or you're not in the bathroom a lot, okay? That's very easy to pinpoint. But the polydipsia, as you will also see with the polyphagia, may be ones that people may be experiencing but don't quite know if they're experiencing or not. They can easily overlook those two, especially with the polyphagia when we talk about that. But for me, I'm a person that lives in Texas. So it's hot out here. We drink a lot of fluid, okay? So asking somebody if they have increased thirst, eh, you may, people may be able to pinpoint it, but then some people may not. So polyphagia, increased hunger, okay? So... I'm going to give you a little pathophys and y'all know I don't typically get into that because I'm assuming that we as practicing nurse practitioners already have that on on straight okay this isn't a lecture okay it's more so of a summary it's more so of a, a an overview what you need to know but I feel like I do have to talk about this in relation to polyphagia okay so we know with diabetes that you have an increased amount of circulating glucose in your bloodstream the glucose is needed in the body, but not in the bloodstream. It's in the cells, okay? And the way that it gets in the cells is through your insulin, okay? Through your insulin transporting it in. Now, a person that has diabetes, that's not happening. There's a breakdown somewhere along that cascade where the glucose cannot get into the cell. Our bodies crave glucose. Our brains crave glucose. This is the preferred energy source. OK, this is what feeds our cells. So with polyphagia, you have starved cells because that glucose is not where it needs to be, which is in the cells. OK, so the natural response of our body on the lower end, OK, is 
Well, let's just eat more. Let's send a signal to the brain to make us eat more, okay? But the problem is, is that even when people are eating more, taking in more carbs, those carbs, which break down into glucose, they're still not going anywhere. It's just sitting and hanging out in the bloodstream, okay? They're still not getting into the cell. Okay, and so that is why you'll have this increased hunger is because the cells are starved. Okay, and that in a nutshell is polyphagia. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you. I hope that it was um, helpful and beneficial. I hope for those who did not know about polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphagia, I hope that you left with a better understanding of it. And I even hope that those who are my practicing nurse practitioners that you learned a little bit more. I know for myself, sometimes I remember what they are, but I forget it why they come about what's the pathophys behind polyuria polydipsia polyphagia so i hope that you left with a good overview as to what it is again if you need to research this a little bit more feel free to go ahead and do that y'all uh, my platform is to educate but i don't do a deep dive okay i feel that people really need like quick references so i try to be very mindful of how much i put in these videos and what i put in there and with the encouragement for you to go and research more like i said earlier i am going to put a video about osmolarity i also would love for you to refer your patients to the patient corner i'll put that link down in the description box to help you with your patient education and for the providers out there I have provided a free cheat sheet a quick reference guide when it comes to polyuria polydipsia and polyphagia if you have not already please consider subscribing and being a part of the family here and dinging that notification bell so you do not miss an upload if you're on Instagram I typically am very active over there and I'm at the diabetes MP and again I do want to leave you with something something that I want us to always remember let us never ever leave a nurse behind bye bye